say self-control or self-confidence i'm sorry and uh self-reliance uh, and another synonym for confidence would be assurance all right and so um a person that is confident they 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 trust in themselves they trust in their ability or they trust in god and they trust in god's ability in them or through them so a person that is confident um and the reason i mentioned courage with confidence is because you can't be confident and fearful at the same time mm -hmm. you can't you, mm -hmm. if you if you get confidence now well let me put it like this you could there could be some fear there but you don't allow the fear to hinder you mm -hmm. because i can remember when i was in third grade <laughs> i um I used to be in plays and all that. I can't tell you. I played a bookworm. I don't even remember the name <laughs> of the play. I played a bookworm. And, man, I had knots in my stomach. I wasn't, I wasn't scared to get on stage and do it. Okay. But there was a, you know, I guess that nervousness of getting in front of everybody and mm -hmm. thinking you're going to mess up and you're going to miss your lines. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but what, what, what happened is um, I had to talk to myself. I think I was seven, eight, nine years old. I remember mm -hmm. how old I was. I had to talk to myself. And I said, you can do this. Ignore what's in, what's, who's in, it was in the audience. Focus on your lines. And, do, and, and nobody taught me this. Nobody told me this. Okay. Nothing. So when I walked on stage, because you know you want to do your best. Mm -hmm. And so when I walked on stage, I literally, nobody taught me this, but I found out later that a lot of professional people do this. When I looked in the audience, I didn't look at the audience. I looked above. I you looked, looked over above the, the audience. I looked uh -huh. over the audience. Okay. And so when I looked over the audience... Um, I just man, I hit it. I just <laughs> did did my lines, and I actually had fun with it. So, did you find a spot on the wall? Yeah. I hear that a lot too. Yeah, yeah. Find well, a I, spot on the wall. Yeah, I I um, I don't know if I found a particular spot on the wall per se, but I just I know I looked. I didn't look at. I looked over everybody's head, mm -hmm. and and I just. I guess I just did my little acting there. Okay. I, I, I played my role there. I, I didn't have to worry about nobody giving me a funny look, or nobody laughing, or nobody mm -hmm. smiling, or nothing like that. And so I just, you know, and, and I found out later when I started doing public speaking that that's one of the first things they tell you. If you are afraid to look people directly in the eye mm -hmm. until you build your confidence, mm -hmm. just look over their head, find your spot in the back of the room. And just talk Absolutely. to that spot. They don't know you not looking at them. Mm -hmm. All they know is you looking forward. Mm -hmm. And so confidence is 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 very similar. It has to be. It does have to be built up. It it. Um, some people would say, you know, well, I don't think it's something that is automatic. I believe it's something that has to be instilled in you. Mm -hmm. Confidence, mm -hmm. um, because trust is built. So confidence has to be built as well. All right. That's wonderful. Um, one of the, the definitions that I found um, as well for confidence is the quality or state of being certain. And, and that's exactly what you said. So some of the synonyms for uh, confidence is trust, belief, and faith. Mm -hmm. Trust, belief, and faith. If you have those three things, then you have confidence. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yes, yes. You, can't, you, you won't have confidence without them. Because if you don't believe, you have to believe, number one, either in yourself or either in your ability or in the ability of God that he can get it through you or the ability of some other person. Mm -hmm. So that's where that's where your confidence, uh, that's the foundation of confidence is trust uh, in someone in, in someone's ability, whether it's yours mm -hmm. or somebody else's. But mm -hmm. there needs to be a trust um, and an assurance or a belief. Or mm -hmm. faith in somebody's in in, in some one's ability, um, if it's yours or someone else's. Okay, all right. So I believe this is uh, Miss Butler. Thank you for choosing Smooth ninety point five FM WGSJBC Radio. You're live on the air. Hi, this is Carly Butler calling. Hello, Carly Butler. How are you? Hello, I'm there. How are you? <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome to Matters of the Heart. I'm excited to be on. Thank you. And then we also have uh, Pastor Daryl Shavers here. So we'll both be talking to you today um, about um, 
confidence and walking in confidence. So, uh, Ms. Carly Butler, can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? I know that um, you are known as Burn Beauty, and you have a website that talks all about that and tells all about that. Um, but um, can you give us a little information today um, about a life, the life-changing experience that you went through that um, it altered your life? And so um, we'll, we'll let you talk a little bit about your experience and, and how you are able to now walk in confidence. Absolutely. Well, in 2006, um, I was assaulted twice, um, just within a few months of uh, time. So I was kidnapped, and I escaped by jumping out of the trunk of my car while, the, while it was moving. And um, during that attack, I didn't sustain really any that many physical injuries, but the second time I was attacked in Skokie, I was held at gunpoint and assaulted with acid, and unfortunately that attack resulted in third degree full thickness burns to about 30% of my body. So I had um, not only emotional uh, scarring and trauma, but lots of physical scars um, that pretty much make me wear my past on my skin. So. Those experiences changed my life dramatically and how I saw, viewed myself, how I viewed relationships and love and all those things. And that's actually where the name Burn Beauty came from. It's a metaphor for my experiences. Um, you know, before this all happened to me, I thought I had it. I, I thought I had it all. I thought I knew what love and, and forgiveness and beauty and all those things were, but I literally had to burn all those notions and I've kind of created new ones for myself in my life. So I'm thankful to be here, um, and I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. All right, so you were able to take, uh, in a sense, those ashes and make beauty out of it all. Um, can Can you tell us um, if you're a believer, Carly? Yes. Uh, I'm, I am Christian. I believe in God. Um, that's been a huge part of my, my journey. It definitely strengthened my faith and my um it's like I lost my identity, I found my purpose, and now I feel like I know what I'm here for. Okay. Okay, and has your faith in God increased in any way as a result of this? Has it increased even more? Absolutely. But by leaps and bounds. You know, I, I've always believed in God and had a strong faith, but when your when life is... Uh, and your self-esteem are constantly challenged over and over again that'll make you question why you're here, but now I know that I'm here for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is Pastor Chavis. Um, Carly, God bless you. Um, and I would just like to know, um, can you share with us briefly your purpose? My purpose? Yes, and how you arrived to that purpose. Well, um, I, when I was first born, um, you know, I had, I couldn't go to work. I was in the hospital for six and a half weeks, and I didn't recognize myself. And I I thought that I didn't want to be here anymore. So it had gotten that dark for me where I couldn't see a future for myself. And I had some serious conversations with God, and the more I started talking to other people and just sharing what happened to me, it was therapeutic that I was also getting a lot of feedback where people felt encouraged and, and hopeful and inspired. And then the, in turn, you know, just me sharing my story, if I can just sow one seed of inspiration, then, then that's what I'm here for. But that's my goal anytime I speak to people, is to give them a little bit of hope to know that there is, you, you have a purpose, there is a reason for you to be here, don't give up. Amen, that's good. So would you say then that your misery became your ministry. Yes. Your purpose. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I got the same testimony that my misery became my ministry, but uh, not like yours. So you're called to reach a specific group of people. Um, you, you are an exhorter or, or you are an encourager. And, and when people hear your story, uh, I'm sure that they shut their mouths and, and stop complaining about all the stuff that they've been complaining about and thank God um, that, they, th that they are where they are. And so it's, it is um, great to hear 
that you did not allow this to stop you, and you didn't allow this um, to hinder you. So let me ask you um, this question. Um, do, you, do you feel that um, you've been successful in, um, in inspiring others to build their confidence and to walk in it? And, and um, if so, how, how, do you, how do you go about doing it? Just get, maybe give us an example or two. Um, I think that I, I mean, I think that any time you're able to encourage one person that success, you know, if you uh, help one person feel good about themselves or just to give them the encouragement to keep living that success. So, um, I, I think that I'm doing okay. Um, uh, what was the other part of the question? How, how do you inspire others to build their confidence and walk in confidence? Because so many times people who lack confidence um, tend to focus on the negative. So how do you get, how, how did you, like example, turn your negative into a positive and how do you inspire others to do the same? Well, I don't, I don't run from my past and I own who I am and I feel good about it. So I've been able to incorporate my trauma into my life and instead of letting my scars, you know, defeat me and have me hiding and sad and down, I just, I own my scars and I smile through it all. And, you know, that's something that shines through. Amen. So a genuineness, uh, which you say comes through as a result um, of what happened to you. You basically taking what happened to you and you using it as a stepping stone to help and help encourage others. Yes. Amen. That that's that's great. That's great. Because now, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Now Carly, um I know that you do a lot of motivational speaking mm -hmm. um as it relates to um what has happened or what has taken place um with you. Um now when you go out and you speak and you get, you know, the questions and um, let's say you, you're you're out in public um, and, and you get all the different questions and even um, when you're speaking, um, do you have moments where um, uh, you, you are not as confident or uh, you feel that you could be a little more confident in, in um, speaking with others or sharing your story? Do you feel that there are moments when you're not confident? Um, yes, and that, that's what makes me human. I think we all, are, throughout our whole lives, we have moments where our confidence and our self-esteem will be challenged over and over again, and we have to find ways to, you know, embrace that fear and, and keep going forward. Um, so, yeah, there are different parts of my life where, you know, I, I'm working on myself, um, but that's, that's, again, that's just a part of life of growing and learning. So I, I take every experience as a learning opportunity to, to try to improve myself. Mm -hmm. And um, in doing that, I hope that, you know, I'm setting a good example or showing someone else that it's possible to work through it. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you rebuild in those moments? Um, sometimes we can wake up and, and we don't have... Um, you know, that particular morning, we may not be feeling as confident as we did the day before. Um, in those moments, how do you rebuild? What do you do to help rebuild yourself? Well, I'm a firm believer in having an attitude of gratitude. That's something that has carried me, taken me very far. If I am down, disappointed, not feeling like moving, I always think of three things in the moment that I'm thankful for. And it immediately changes my mood because in a moment, all of those things could be taken away. So that that helps me out a lot. I'm thankful for my health, my family and friends, you know, for having having this purpose and, and finally knowing what I'm here for and not having to question it anymore. All those things help me to um, just feel good about life again. Okay. All right, and now next Saturday, you'll be speaking at a conference um, with young ladies uh, ages 9 to 18. Is that correct? Uh, 9 through 14. Yeah. 9 through 14, okay. 9 through 14. And um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the conference, where, where it's going to be held, and, and uh, you know what others, if they'd like to attend, what they can do to attend as well? 
Yes, it's going to be held at Fleetwood Jordan uh, Community Center in Evanston, Illinois. Mm -hmm. So it's Saturday, April 18th from 2 to 5 p.m. Tickets are uh, only 10.